wonder if you can uh, detail a little bit on these 400,000 returns that EU is planning in the next few days or weeks. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure where you got the exact figure from, but uh, what I can say is that uh, we are indeed starting to roll out the relocation scheme that was adopted, and um, the first relocation will uh, start on Friday uh, from Italy to Sweden. Yeah, sorry, please. Returns. Okay, you're you're probably referring to the secret. secret. Uh, the se so so secret. <laughs> figure is not there. We didn't hear you. Can you please? Okay. Um, I guess the secret plans is the council conclusion. I had a look at the council conclusion and the figure, this figure is not there. So I wonder what you can tell me about this. We have outlined an action plan on return, how to make returns more effective, because what we see is that in 2014, less than 40% of the irregular migrants uh, that were ordered to leave the EU actually departed. So we have outlined on the 9th of September, in all transparency on our website, a proposal how to make effective, um, how to make returns more effective in cooperating with the EU member states and with our agencies to precisely improve the numbers, but I don't have now uh, any figure to communicate to you because that will obviously uh, depend on how effective the cooperation with the member states will be in applying the legislation on uh, returns of, irreg of, of irregular migrants. Fuck. Yes, it was so secret that it's part of our proposals package of the 9th of September. It was on our website since then. But the fact that the council discuss discusses it tomorrow does not make it all of a sudden secret. Yeah, but the point 100,000. So I wonder if no these 400,000 are foreseeable at all. I mean, this number could come from commenting on any figures that you have picked up, I don't know where, in our uh, action plan, we just want to make returns more effective. So obviously, any figures will depend on how effectively the member states are applying the EU rules and um, carrying out returns. Yes, please. Lord Giovanna, the gentleman behind you first. Uh, yes, hi, uh, Nicolai Nielsen at Observer. Could you perhaps give us a little bit more details about the relocation you mentioned that's happening on Friday, from, would, you, would you say from Italy to Sweden? I mean, how many and what nationalities? And then uh, could you also perhaps um, touch upon returns? Are, you, are there plans to link development aid to readmission agreements to third countries and things like this? Thanks. On the first point, uh, so we indeed expect the first relocation uh, of Eritrean refugees from Italy to Sweden to happen on Friday, and this is precisely why Commissioner Avramopoulos will be traveling to um, Italy, and he will be giving a press conference there, so I would not want to preempt now further details um, um, of that, where he will be speaking precisely about this. On uh, your second point, um, I think in our action plan of returns, you have the main points. There are a number of different instruments um, of how we can make return policies more effective. Obviously, readmission agreements uh, play, an, play an important role. Funding, um, is, also, uh, funding uh, is also provided under the Asylum, Migration and Integration Fund, where member states have been allocated more than 800 million for return operations for the period 2014-2020. And the Commission is also investing funds Five million in a readmission capacity building facility. So uh, we have also proposed to increase uh, the Frontex budget um, for returns for 2016 to reach um, a total of 15 million. So there is a number of different instruments that we are deploying here to make return policy more effective. Giovanna. Um. Okay, before two follow-ups to the question of my colleagues and then another question always on migration. Um, so in your action plan that it will be presented tomorrow, there's not going to be any kind of figures or a number. Is that correct? I understood it properly. And on the 400,000 actually, um, can you say if it's a credible estimation uh, based on the information that you had from your member states uh, on that or not? And then, uh, always on migration, but another uh, clarification uh, for the return. It's Eritrea, one of the countries in which you can consider to return a migrant, or is like Syria, one of the countries that it's not possible to return anyone to? Thank you. 
On your first question, I think the action plan is for everyone to read there. As I said, I'm not now commenting on any figures, speculative figures that might be out there in the press. Uh, the ultimate figure will depend on how effective the member states uh, uh, apply the rules that we have in place. On your second question, uh, excuse me, I didn't quite understand it. If you, if you can relocate to Eritrea. No, if you can think... return someone to Eritrea or Eritrea is like Syria, one of those countries that you cannot return people to. See, you can only return people to a place which, in which they don't uh, face persecution, so there is a case-by-case -case assessment being carried out, as always. Anything else? Uh, Follow-up. If I'm not mistaken, when you did the first relocation of 40,000, you consider Syria and Eritrea two countries from that and most of the member states were considered countries from which asylum was granted. So I want to know if something had changed on that or not. No, we based our estimates on the Eurostat figures, indeed, latest. And we, we returned the people who are irregular migrants, not the ones that are asylum seekers. Uh, I think that was clear by now, but you never know. Yes, please. Just on the... Um the migration management teams, uh, formerly known as hotspots. Um, you, uh, with, with developments in Italy on Friday, can you give me a state of kind of play? I mean, are, are they fully functioning now? And Margaritas, in your introductory remarks, you kind of went to that uh, in Greece as well. Are things moving there? Are the hotspots functioning? What, what I what I say is that Frontex is already building up operations, but we also have commission teams on the ground. Uh, uh, the director general of our new structural reform support service, Martin Verve, is in Athens. Uh, colleagues from DG Home are also in Athens. So we try to coordinate on the ground. And of course, part of our ambitious budgetary plans that we want, that the, the new budget that uh, we have presented to Council and Parliament, the amending budget, is precisely to allow for much more effort on the ground. So this is uh, happening. Parliament uh, has already shown its willingness to help. This is going fast. We need more people. We need more money. We need more teams. And I think we're working very hard to, to, to get there. Maybe, maybe to add that actually there are already fruits of our work because uh, as you have seen following all the calls that President Juncker had, notably um, with uh, also Chancellor Feynman, who was yesterday in Greece. Um, uh, there have been additional officials uh, that have been promised to help, and that should help, as uh, Prime Minister Tsipras himself said, to uh, roll out the hotspots in Greece, which uh, we expect to become operational within the next one to two weeks. And the one in Italy, as we say, I mean, with the first relocation taking place uh, on Friday, that shows that uh, it's working. Yes, please. Yes, I'm Katalin Harmai from the Hungarian Daily Paper, Népszabadság. Uh, I would like to come back to the draft uh, action plan and tackle the issue of the resettlement. The action plan says that work on a structured EU-wide approach to resettlement shall be stepped up. Could you be uh, elaborate? Could you elaborate uh, what that means? Uh, a bit of clarification. Thank you. Okay, I think here you are actually um, confusing maybe a little bit two issues because um, when we talk about resettlement, uh, you know that this is one of the ways we are working in order to get uh, through a safe route uh, refugees to Europe so that they don't have to actually go on um, dangerous boat trips. So we have so far collectively committed to resettling over 22,000 uh, people from outside Europe over the next year, showing solidarity with our neighbors and individual member states have also announced bilateral resettlement pledges. Of course, as uh, the president himself has said, this remains very modest uh, in comparison to the Herculean efforts undertaken notably by Turkey, Jordan and Lebanon, who are hosting over 4 million of Syrian refugees. And that is precisely why the president announced in his State of the Union speech uh, that building on the experience of the scheme that is now underway um, and also on 
our European agenda on migration, the Commission will develop a proposal for a structured system to ensure a collective approach to resettlement at times of intense uh, refugee crisis, and this should come by March 2016. Okay, have we exhausted the subject? On this, on refugees? Yes, please, go ahead. Uh, oui, sur le plan it's on the action plan with Turkey. If I understand, there's a uh, agreement with the Turkish side. This uh, the Turkey said they were going to study the plan, perhaps come up with their own. So, what were their plans? When will we get agreement? Uh, yesterday, when we had that question, we said that this was a first productive meeting which allowed the, a process to begin. And in that process, we would look at all of the issues in the action plan. We didn't say it was an agreement, because you don't have an agreement during the course of uh, a visit. It was an uh, agreement in principle to start a process, a work in progress plan. Mr. Timmermans will be going either this weekend or the beginning of next week. A process has started, and there seems to be a mutual willingness to move fast. Clearly, we need to do more with Turkey, and I believe there is a willingness on both parts to work on specific plans uh, by the Council the 15th, 16th of October. Thank you, Mina. Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, well, according to the portfolio,